And a very warm welcome to everyone to this uh, celebration of Consumers International's uh, 60th anniversary. Um, it uh, is a great pleasure to welcome everybody from around the world here today. Uh, 60 years ago, a pioneering and foresighted group of consumer advocates joined together and uh, started Consumers International as an organization that would ensure that the consumer voice is represented at the highest levels. And 60 years on, we now bring together 200 consumer groups across 100 countries. Um, we work on the basis of consumer rights and we work for a fair, safe and sustainable marketplace for everyone in every country. Our 60th anniversary this year is an opportunity not just to recognize success, to recognize and thank those who have created achievements, but also to look forward and think about the next decade, um, think about what we want to achieve and how we build better. It's really important to us uh, and has always been to collaborate uh, across our membership base, but also to break across in, uh, in uh, breakdown silos and uh, partner with fantastic organizations that have a similar vision for an optimistic future. And I'm thrilled uh, today to introduce a, uh, a person who I admire very greatly. Pamela Coke Hamilton is the executive director for the International Trade Center. She has just started in this role she actually has a long history working with the consumer movement, most recently at UNCTAD. As I'm sure you know, the International Trade Center is the only development agency that's focused on perspectives of small and medium-sized enterprises in emerging and transition economies around the world. And so a critical voice in thinking about the marketplace of the future. Uh, Pamela has a very distinguished legal uh, background and one also in international development and it's wonderful to have her here today to celebrate with us and give us a little bit of her vision for the future, her thoughts about consumer advocacy as a global movement and how we can better work together. So with that, can I please hand to you, Pamela, thank you, and uh, looking forward to, to listening to your, your views. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it, and I'm very happy to be here. So good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you virtually today. I'm sorry that we can't meet in person, but hopefully uh, soon. Um, and. This is an important time to mark the 60th anniversary of the global consumer advocacy movement represented by Consumers International. I'd like to thank Director General Helena Laurent for her invitation and warm welcome. We're all aware of the unprecedented times in which we're living. The COVID-19 pandemic caught the world off guard. It has caused social, economic, and political shocks globally. It has led to major changes in our personal and professional lives and caused us to reassess our values and priorities. It has also caused severe disruption to businesses and global and regional value chains, while also showing how interdependent we all are as a global community. There's an urgent need. There's an urgent need to identify medical solutions to fight the pandemic, but we must also accelerate our efforts towards full and sustainable economic recovery. Consumers will have a crucial role to play in this recovery. History tells us that shifting consumer preferences can significantly affect the direction businesses take. One example is that of Ralph Nader, an American consumer activist who influenced the transformation of the car industry in the USA in the 1960s and led to car makers placing a greater premium on safety through integrating new production technologies and practices. Ralph Nader's work has spearheaded the consumer movement in the USA and subsequently, triggered the development of consumer protection laws. Today, consumer influence is at an all time high. From behind the screen, ordinary people can have an impact on the design, marketing, content, and eventual profitability of goods and services. 
but I believe the pandemic will lead to a reevaluation of consumer values and preferences. In fact, the June 2020 Ernst & Young Future Consumer Index suggests that there are five consumer segments which will drive demand post-pandemic. One, consumers who prioritize affordability. Two, consumers who put great importance on health and safety. Three, consumers who are willing to pay a premium for ethically sourced and sustainable goods and services. Consumers, four, consumers who prefer brands that are mindful of their social impacts. And five, consumers, mostly young, who primarily seek an experience. Businesses that manage to adapt to these changing consumer preferences will be able to remain in the market and gain consumer trust and loyalty. I would like to elaborate on trends concerning consumers and sustainability. In short, consumers are increasingly recognizing the premium surrounding ethically sourced, sustainable goods and services. And those companies whose brands address social issues inbuilt into ethical sourcing stand to benefit from this new conscious consumer dollar. This is an aspect to which we at ICC are paying close attention. Over the past few decades, consumers have become increasingly vocal on sustainability issues. A growing part of the consumer market expect companies to have environmental and social issues on the forefront of their radar. As a result, we have seen some consumers turning away from brands that have shown a lack of respect or understanding of these values. Or even if there's a perception of this, for 21st century consumer behavior, perception matters. Consumers armed with this information and with the power of social media have become incredibly effective at pressuring companies to adopt more sustainable business models. And the pandemic has only enhanced this trend. There's one important caveat here. The majority of this still remains in developed country consumer market. But this is changing as populations around the world become increasingly cognizant of the power of their choice. At ITC, we work with small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, in order to build their competitiveness. One of the ways of doing this is to provide these companies with the latest market trends and market data on buyer and consumer preferences. In 2018 to 2019, ITC conducted a comprehensive survey of more than 500 EU retailers to understand the scale and dynamics of demand for sustainable products in the EU. The survey has shown that 85% of retailers reported increased sales of sustainable products over the past five years, and 96% of retailers interviewed have sustainable sourcing strategies, which they implement through sourcing products that are certified to sustainability standards, such as organic, fair trade, rainforest alliance, or that are compliant with the corporate, court, sorry, the corporate codes of conduct. One of the major reasons that retailers are so keen on sourcing sustainable products is the ever increasing consumer demand for these products. And with this demand comes profitability. We have to remember that it can be profitable to do good and keep value chains clean and transparent. Consumer movements and organizations such as Consumers International are extremely important in increasing awareness and charting the right direction towards consumption and production patterns patterns that promote safer and more sustainable products and are in line with SDG 12 on sustainable consumption and production. As we seek to better merge doing business and doing good with the aim of achieving both sustainable and inclusive economic recovery and a safe marketplace for consumers, I suggest that we need to place the accent on the following. One, supporting businesses in producing safe and sustainable products with minimal negative environmental and social impact. Two, enabling responsible product use and disposal, including through providing consumers with information on sustainable consumption practices, and if need be, applying consumer nudging techniques aimed at guiding consumer behavior in a positive way. Three, providing consumers with credible and verified information on products, Four, providing more support to businesses who are willing to sell products online. The pandemic has shown that there's a significant untapped potential in e-commerce. And five, developing robust, sorry, and five, developing robust consumer and consumer data protection infrastructure 
and legal framework, especially in developing and least developed countries. At ITC, we're supportive of the work of Consumers International. We closely collaborated with Consumers International in developing the guidelines for providing product sustainability information in 2017 through the UN Environment Program. The guidelines provide value chain and public sector professionals with clear guidance on how to make effective, trustworthy claims to consumers on product-related sustainability information. Ultimately, the guidelines aim to empower consumers to make informed, sustainable choices. The future remains uncertain, as we're not yet sure when we will ex exit this pandemic period. We know that MSMEs around the world have been devastated and will need support in this recovery period. But we also know that there are new opportunities out there. The climate crisis has left us. It has, has not left us and has never left us. It has just taken a quiet temporary backseat, which means that we're, there, will be continue to be, there will continue to be a need to green our value chains, green our MSMEs, and green our consumer preferences. ITC, along with Consumers International, will do our part by helping consumers make informed choices and access a sustainable and safe marketplace, while also equipping businesses and policymakers with the tools they need to take advantage of this growing demand for more ethically sourced and produced products. Once again, I wish you a happy 60th anniversary. Thank you for the incredible work done by Consumers International, and we pledge to continue to work with you as we continue on this journey. Thank you very much.